In the last video, we learned the law of cosines. Well, there's also something called the law of sines, and it's used in a different situation. The law of sines is used when the given information is um, two angles, and we know one of the sides that's across from one of the angles, and the unknown is the side that's across from the other known angle. This is the primary situation we use the law of sines. Now we don't actually need the law of sines to answer this question. We could do it by drawing an altitude over here and figuring out that this red line could be thought of if I think of this red line as being part of this left triangle then that red line could be thought of as 300 sine 50. On the other hand, if I think of it as part of this triangle on the right, it's x times, x is the hypotenuse, and x times sine 25. And then when I solve for x by dividing both sides by sine 25, I get 300 sine 50 over sine 25, which turns out, when you plug it into the calculator, to be that 544. Notice, just for reference, that 544 is bigger than 300, because 50 is bigger than 25, but 544 is not double 300. The law of signs, the official statement of the law of signs, is side A over sine of angle A is equal to side B over the sine of angle B is equal to side C over the sine of angle C. That's our official uh, law of signs statement. And we can prove it, at least part of it, in the general case by going like this, A, B, at least the first two parts of it. If I go like that, and I draw in this altitude, this side could either be thought of as lowercase b times sine of angle A, or if I think of it as being across from angle B, and A being the hypotenuse, A sine B. And then if I divide both sides, by sine B sine A, I'll get B over sine B equals A over sine A. So if we go back to the original question, 350 25x, I could just say 300 over sine 25 is equal to x over sine 50. Multiply both sides by sine 50 get 300 sine 50 over sine 25 equals x, which again is about 544. Now there's another situation this doesn't seem to fit the law of sines perfectly because I have the two angles and the unknowns across from one of the angles, but the known side the known side is not across from an angle. It's not across from 40, that is. Well, the trick to this question is to use the fact that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees to work out that this, these two add up to 60 so far, so that has to be 120. Now that I have that, I can kind of cross out this 40 because it's not needed anymore. And then I can say 500 over sine of 120 is equal to x over sine 20, multiply both sides by sine 20, and get about 197.5. In the real world, if this is like a river, I can go, and there's like something over here, it's spot C, I can come from where I am across the river and kind of look across and measure this angle. And then I could walk. I know how far I'm walking. I'm walking 200 feet. 
and then from that point I look across and I see what this angle is and this is a perfect example even though and I want to know let's say how big that is um, I can work out this angle over here is 95 degrees because they have to add up to 180 then I can disregard the, um, the 50 it's not across from anything then I could work out x over sine 35 equals 200 over sine 95 to get 115.15 now that's not quite how wide the river is. How wide the river is is this line right here. But now that I know in this triangle here, the 115.15 is kind of like the hypotenuse. So I'll, I'll call this y. And I can say y equals 115.15 times sine 50. Because, oh, that 50 that I crossed out is actually useful for doing this next part, finding the height of the triangle to get 88.2. So that's sort of the width of the river from these two sighting points. The law, the law of signs could also be used to find a missing angle, although we have to kind of know that the picture is drawn to scale. So x is going to be between 0 and 90 degrees according to this diagram. And I say 8 over sine x equals 7 over sine 40, or sine x if I cross multiply 7 sine x equals 8 sine 40 or sine x equals 8 sine 40 over 7 which is 0.7346 so then the reference angle is 47.3 and it's not just the reference angle it's also the answer to the question I could also get a picture like this the same three pieces of information the 40, the 8, and the 7, but now the x is here. And, the, and it ends up the same thing. I end up with sine x equals 0 0.7346. The reference angle is still 47.3, but the x is obtuse. We can see it's obtuse. So it's 180 minus 47.3, which is 132.7. So for this question, if I just generally drew you know, kind of like that, and said it's not drawn to scale. So we actually have two potential answers. If I say not drawn to scale, and we can't trust, we don't know whether this is x is acute or obtuse, there'd actually be two answers. Or, but if they do give us some clue as to whether it's acute or obtuse, then, um, then we, um, we can identify the answer. It's one of those two.